Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel and welcome back to our take. This week we will be recapping um, the third video in our three video lifetime series. This movie is called Banish Searching for My Sister and is starring Tatiana Ali. Um, if you missed the first two movies, um, Line Sisters and Single Black Female, we will provide a link to those videos at the end of this video so you can check those out if you want to um, but for this video we will be um, doing a review and recap of Vanished so um, this will conclude my three movie um, series and um, in the next three movies after this one Corey will be reviewing his three or we will be reviewing Corey's three um, movies and we'll get into that in our next video okay so um, this movie however that we will be reviewing again stars Tat Tatiana Ali and she plays um, twins Jada and Kayla and I thought she did a really good job kind of selling that twin role do you think she did a good job yeah I think she did a a really good job because you don't really well, <laughs> she did a good job because you don't see the other sister that often um yeah so she so she um she did a good job stepping into the sister's role what she had to work with so yeah yeah so at least she didn't have like have to play it the full movie yeah have to yeah. keep going back and forth switching back and forth so no it was mostly just in the beginning that she really had to play them both at the same time um, but the movie also starred uh, Jasmine Guy from A Different World. Um, and I know a lot of you are excited to see her. And for those of you who watch soap operas, there were a few soap people in this movie. Um, we had Justin Bruinick, I hope I pronounced his name right, um, from All My Children When All My Children Was On, as well as Caroline Hennessy from General Hospital. Um, Tretch from Naughty by Nature was also in it so that was kind of a surprise because I didn't realize he would be in it um, to me Tatiana Ali and Justin Brunning were the best things about this movie I think they did an amazing job what do you think they did good I like Tretch's little his little part <laughs> he acted his role good yeah um reminded me of what was what movie is that he was in Jason's lyric was that the one I'm not sure. Replay, well, but anyway, he played. I, I think that was it. I can't remember. Um, but he played his part really, really well. Yeah. Okay. So um, the story begins with Kayla dropping off her seven-year-old daughter, Olivia, and um, Jada also has a daughter who's a little bit older. Her name is Megan, I believe. Um, and she drops off, Kayla drops off her seven-year-old daughter to Jada's house. And they seem to be, you know, close. But you also get a little bit of underlying tension. Um, we find out that um, both of them are divorced. So both of them are single mothers. Um, Kayla's ex is a firefighter. Um, they don't say right off the bat what Jada's ex does, but... Um, they ever do. Do they ever say what he does? I don't think so. I don't think they say what um Jada's ex <clears throat> Jada's ex does. Yeah, but both of the both of the men are still in their uh, daughter's lives. Yes, they are. So um, we find out that Kayla is planning to move to a new apartment, and she asks Jada for money, and the audience gets the sense that this is not the first time that she's done this. Um, that maybe she's done this a lot it's, before. It's a pattern. You, you get a sense that it's a pattern <clears throat> of her coming and frequently asking for money or other assistance or stuff from Jada. Yeah. So um, she asked for $2,000 and Jada initially is hesitant, but she goes ahead and gives it to her. Um, but she, um, it seems like she depends a lot on her sister. Yeah, she and, does. 
and Kayla even throws in that she's the youngest, but I mean, if it's five minutes, I don't think it, <laughs> it makes a difference. <laughs> But I'm not a twin. 97 seconds, ain't that what she said? Something like that. that. It was a, it was a, <laughs> yeah. It was a crazy thing, but um, yes, yeah, she tried to throw in that she's the younger sister. Yeah, so she's leaning on that, but mm -hmm. maybe <clears throat> we're not twins, so maybe it's a twin thing. Twins maybe feel that older, younger thing, even though it's just five minutes. I don't know. I don't know if there are any twins are out there and y'all y'all watching this. Do y'all play that card too? I just I've always <laughs> been curious about that because they came up in this movie. Just wonder if y'all if y'all play that card too. Well, I'm the oldest, you the youngest. I mean, just interesting that how that dynamic works. Right. Yeah. So Kayla leaves her daughter um, with Jada and says she'll pick her up a little later. She gives some excuse about having to get her room ready, um, and she leaves her apartment keys with Jada. So a little later on, it seems like does it seem like days later. Yeah. Um, she's trying to get in touch with uh, Kayla and she can't um, and she seems really really worried about her so um, in the next scene we we meet Jada's ex Ter Terrell Terrell yeah. yeah now this is the strange part he's credited um, in the credits in the cast as Tyrell but there's a scene in the movie where he's giving her a check and it says Terrell. So I'm not sure if it's Tyrell or Terrell. I what did was, not notice that. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I noticed it, but you know, my eyes are really bad. Like I usually wear uh, super thick glasses, so <laughs> <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> you can see into the future. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so that was just something weird that I noticed. Okay, so I'm going to call him Tyrell because that's how he's credited. That's what they call the character on IMDb. <laughs> so um, he, he's concerned about, um, you know, his daughter being around bad influences, which he clarifies that he's talking about. Um, he clarifies that he's talking about Kayla. Um, and and this is where you get a better sense that there's a pattern going on of her behavior because he doesn't like you said he doesn't like her coming over there and being around his daughter so there's if you had um, suspicions about it before he pretty much clarified there's a pattern with Kayla and her behavior yeah because he asked her you know let me guess you you uh she asked you for money and he was spot on mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um so she jada tells him oh i'm concerned because kayla seems to she's disappeared you know she seems to have disappeared i don't know she's not answering any of my calls and so um tyrell suggests that she contact warren who is kayla's um ex okay so um kayla jada says well i don't want to worry him so i'll just see what i can dig up on my own so she goes to kayla's apartment which is a total mess mm -hmm. um but she sees like a promotional flyer for a club um and then at this point after she goes to the apartment and realizes that kayla is not there that's when she goes to see warren okay so she goes to see warren and olivia the daughter seems very happy to see her father but he lets you know um Jada know you know I'm working double shifts so I'm not going to be able to take her um, and Jada tells him well Kayla has disappeared I can't get in contact with her and I've had you know Olivia since Saturday yeah. but Warren lets her know that he can't take care of her um, and he also lets her know that he's been uh, trying to contact her also yeah. um but Warren gives Kayla um, some money or offers her some, offers money. some money for her babysitting or watching Olivia. Yeah, and then you know Kayla j just Jada just takes Olivia home with her. Okay, so Jada goes home and actually when she was with Warren, she Warren told her suggested that she call Gary. Now Gary is Kayla's boyfriend. 
Um, so Jada goes home and calls Gary, but she gets his voicemail. So at this point, um, she goes to the police. And this is days later. Yes, I think. quite maybe what over maybe I'll say like five days. It's been it's been a while, and uh, uh, maybe three to five days later, if not longer, actually. Yeah, I think I think the uh, detective said it was like five days. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so she goes to the police, and this is when we see Jasmine Guy for the first time. She plays the detective. Now, when I heard she was going to be in the movie, I automatically assumed she was going to play, like, the mom or something like that. So it's nice to see her in, you know, the role as the detective. Carolyn Hennessy is the, um, the other detective, her partner. Um, but I wasn't... At first, I wasn't really kind of buying them as detectives, and I don't know if it was my own, um, because I've seen them in totally different roles, because, of course, Jasmine Guy was Whitley, mm -hmm. and then Carolyn Hennessy has always played a uh, lawyer on General Hospital. She's had other roles, but that might be something that she's really known for. So, at first, I didn't really, uh, I wasn't really buying it, but what did you think? Nice. What the? What I didn't like about them is they. You seem like they seem more concerned over a missing persons, but like they brought up the fact that why are you taking so long to file a missing persons report? And they basically start grilling Jada. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, so but as far as the performance as detectives, I thought it was plausible. I mean. And she, them, and them grilling her the way they were grill, yeah. grilling, grilling her. I was like, come, I think you'd be more trying to take information in instead of giving her the third degree. Like they're giving her the third degree. It seemed like they automatically assumed that the sister was into something that she wasn't supposed to be into, and that um, that's the reason why she was missing. Um, I don't. It didn't feel to me like they were taking it seriously. Yeah, they don't at take first. it seriously. Um, but then when I thought about it, it makes a little sense. You know, she wasn't far off the mark because <laughs> yeah. Kayla was into some yeah, stuff. Yeah, Kayla was into some stuff, but, you know, you think they would have, but it came off as being a little more um, caring to her, her plight, given how upset she was. Mm -hmm. and, and it does seem like they weren't taking her as serious as they could be. And kept an open mind. Yeah, kept them, yeah. They weren't, yeah. So Jada tells them about, um, you know, Warren, about um, the ex-boyfriend, and basically everything about her sister. They immediately seem to, sus to uh, suspect Warren, which I guess that's always the first suspect yeah. is the husband or the ex or whatever. Um, but Jada says, oh, no, he's a good guy. He's a good father. And, um, you know. Yeah. After they got past grilling her, then they asked about the husband. They grilled her first. Right. <laughs> um, so Jada also mentions the check that she gave her that um, apparently she never cashed. So um, the detectives go and talk to Warren, of course, first. And Warren tells them that Kayla used to have a drug problem. Um, but that she was clean and tells him that Kayla was the one that filed for divorce and he feels that they are suspicious of him um, and tells them that he would never hurt her. Um, so then they go back to the station and they're going through her voice messages and you know there's a message from a woman looking for her and then there's another message from a man calling her the B word. And um, then there's also a message from Warren saying, Jada, you know, Jada came by look, the house looking for you today. So that must have been the day that um, Jada went to, went to go see him. Yeah, went to go see Warren. To tell him that she was trying to get in touch with her. So, um, so Detective Hill... That's Jasmine Guy's character and Detective Donahue. I, I, I never did get their names. 
Donna, if something with a D, I think. I didn't get their name. I know Jasmine Guy's character was de okay. Detective Hill. So, but the two detectives are talking about, you know, uh, running a background check on some of the, you know, players in this case. And um, Detective Hill says she ran Warren's financials. They're fine. They're mm -hmm. clear. And then what's strange is they also ran um, Jada's yeah. financials. So they might suspect her a little bit. So their suspicion on Warren seems to fade, though. So they go to Jada's house and let her know that, um, you know, they talk to, to um, Gary. Now, Gary is the, uh, is the boyfriend, her cur Kayla's current boyfriend. And he was the one who left the message calling her a B. Yeah, he left a very angry message on the voicemail. Yeah, so according to the uh, detectives, he's been in jail for a DUI, which he blames Kayla for. Um, and they are saying that he's been in jail since the last time she was seen. Yeah. So they That's ruled him out of any wrongdoing and in, in, in whatever disappearance it may be involving Kayla. Yeah. But then... They turn their suspicion against Jada, and you see Detective Hill kind of toss a picture on the counter of Jada outside of Kayla's apartment. And, you know, she asks her, did she give you a key? And Jada's like, yeah. And so she's like, well, why are you concerned with me? Why aren't you doing your job? You know, you're supposed to be looking for my sister. You're not supposed to be su suspecting me. So she gets really angry. And um, I think at this point is when she kind of decides to take matters into, into her own hands. hands. Talk to detectives up to this point. They're not really performing the way she feels they should be performing or acting the way she feels they should be acting in terms of the disappearance of her um, sister. So she's going to take matters into her own hands. Mm -hmm. But they did give her some useful information about where, um, you know, the last place that um, Kayla was seen. Um, and I guess her car was parked. They found her car parked outside of a club. So Jada takes this information and she just runs with it. Um, the, the detectives told her that they would go to the club and ask questions, but that wasn't good enough for Jada. So she decides to go herself. Now at the club, someone mistakes Kayla, oh, or right. someone mistakes Jada for Kayla. Kayla, yeah. Yeah. Um, and at first she, she starts to say, no, I'm not Kayla, but then she decides to just go with it. Um, so that's when I think she gets the idea to just dress up like. Yeah, impersonate her sister to try to get some more answers about what may have happened yeah because when she goes back and sees the de detectives they tell they tell her or actually i think she calls them on the phone and they tell her well you know we don't have anything yet but we need to get a timeline of her you know retrace her final steps where she was right before she disappeared or whatever and create a timeline and then um i, I could see the wheels turning mm -hmm. in jada's head yep so I'm thinking at this point, Jada is about to retrace her steps. So Kayla goes and um, she gets dressed up like Jada. Jada. Jada goes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. She must have did a good job. She <laughs> Jada goes and she, I know, she dresses up like Kayla and then um, she goes to the club to kind of retrace her steps. So she hangs out with Kayla's friends, she talks to the bartender. Um, but she, um, she doesn't get a whole lot of information. So she ends up going to the bar across the street and she encounters a very angry drug dealer that kind of puts her in a chokehold and to ask her where his money is. So, um, Guess who that was? <laughs> <laughs> right. My man Tretch. <laughs> so he uh, was a very convincing uh -huh. he, he played that part to the team. Seriously. <laughs> um, so anyway, he thinks that Jada is Kayla. And, um, 
you know, basically tells her to run him his money or whatever, or, you know, basically threatens yeah. her. Um, and he seems like he's a very dangerous person who really wants his money. He wants his so, money. Um, Jada should be a little concerned at this point. So Jada goes to the detectives and tries to give them all of this information. And they're just like, why did you do that like that's dangerous mm -hmm. um you know plus you're impeding an ongoing One investigation, investigation. Mm -hmm. um and she basically just tells them look i'm gonna do whatever it takes to um find my sister you know i don't care how dangerous it is so then she goes back to the club the next night and then she runs into kayla's uh girlfriends one of her friends and this is this part is kind of funny um because the girl is kind of you know faded or whatever and you know she's talking to the girl and the girl is like well come party with me and all of this stuff and then kayla's i mean jada slips up <laughs> and she um talks about kayla in the third person she's like i just want to know where kayla was and then she mm -hmm. stops <laughs> and then yeah. the girl is just looking at her mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden she's like Oh my God, girl, you higher than me. <laughs> but yep. while that is going on, one of Kayla's friends that Jada had met from the night before is in the background and he's witnessing this and he's already suspicious about her. So, um, you know, he's just kind of now extremely suspicious. Mm -hmm. um, so he goes and he confronts her and tells her, you're not fooling anybody. And then um, she just walks away. So she goes back to the first club and she ends up running into Gary, the boyfriend. And Gary immediately, yeah, he knows right away, immediately recognizes her and asks her what she's doing. And, um, you know, she basically tells him that Jada's missing and he's like, oh, that explains it. I guess that, that to him, that explains why she didn't. You know, answer his call. Yeah, answer his call and why he left that angry message. Yeah. Um, and he tells her that the last time he saw her, she was with Warren. So I guess what happened was they were in the club partying, and Warren came in to drag her out because she was supposed to be with the baby with Olivia. With Olivia. So he came in to come and get her, and um, she, Kayla ended up leaving with him. But she was Gary's ride because Gary was yeah. drunk or, or high or whatever. She was supposed to be his ride home. Yeah. And so he ended up, that's how he got his DUI because he didn't have his ride. And the next thing, Jada is at her job talking to her boss. And um, apparently while she was running around dressed up as her sister every night, she had been going into work late. She was missing deadlines. And her boss at this point is fed up. And so her boss tells her, um, basically, you're fired. Um, so she ends up getting fired. But what's funny about that, because at the beginning of, we sort of skipped this part, but at the beginning of the um, movie, you see um, Jada sitting off, and I guess it came across like she either recently got promoted or she was really doing really good at the beginning of the movie. She was getting complimented. So you're, I'm assuming she either got a pay raise or some type of promotion at the outset of the movie when it first started and then of course um like ty was just saying um then at this point her going back and forth to the club she started coming in late and it seemed like it just a real quick 180 for on the job performance where you're one minute you're seemingly promoted and the next minute oh you're getting fired so yeah. that's that was like really that had to be within a matter of maybe what I'll say three to four weeks, maybe. Mm -hmm. If not even, if even that long. Probably wasn't even that. Yeah, long. not even that long. So I just thought that was yeah. odd, but anyway. So back at her house, um, Warren comes over, and she. I guess he had been watching Olivia and making it seems like, because he said the girls are back. So um, he brings the kids back and. Um, Jada asked him why he lied about not seeing um, about not seeing Kayla, be you know, 
that night that he was in the club and he tells her that you know he didn't want to tell the police that what Kayla was doing that she was out partying when she was supposed to be home with her child um, or that he had to drag her out of a bar so she could she would go home and be a responsible parent or whatever um, so it sounded like he didn't want to make her look bad but then you know Jada seems to understand, but she well, says... Well, brought up a good point. He said, why did you wait so long to tell the police your own self? Yeah. Because you're thinking the same way. I'm thinking we're not trying to get Kayla in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, you waited as long as you did to go to the police, so don't be like coming right. down on me for doing what I did and leaving out some stuff. Right. We're both trying to protect Kayla. Exactly. And because he said that, um, you know, Jada understands... But then she's like, well, why didn't you tell me? Yeah. He never really answers that question, but she seems to just let it go. Um, but then he says that um, he thinks that she, he thinks that she's dead. So, of course, that didn't go over well with Jada, but <laughs> um, so then in the next scene, and here's another thing. Do you remember the drug dealer's name? Treacherous name? Mm-hmm. Did they say it? Well, I, I thought I it. heard TK. But then when I was looking at the cast, it said Corgi. Now, TK doesn't sound uh, anything like Corgi. So I'm like, am because, I hearing things? Because where would T have said it? Cause when, he, when she first went in the club and he first approached her in the club, it was just him. She said she said his name a couple times no, in did. the movie. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I just recall. I heard T K, but when I look on you know the cast list, it says Corgi. So huh. I don't know if they changed it mid production. I don't know, or it if is, I'm just hearing things. It is lifetime, so we don't know. <laughs> well, I did. I did not hear. I don't remember her saying his name, but well, I could be. Could I'm be not. Wrong. Don't listen to me. I have bad eyes, bad ears. <laughs> Look at it later and mm. see if you could tell what his name is. Okay. But anyway, I'm just going to call him TK because that's what I heard. Okay, so. So we'll roll with TK. Yeah. So in the next scene, um, the drug dealer TK rolls up on his motorcycle to Jada's house. To her house. And her kids are playing outside. And he gets off his motorcycle and starts playing basketball with her kids. And so you can imagine this mm -hmm. did not go over well with her. So, um, you know, she sees him out there playing with her kids. She freaks out and then she goes and she immediately tells him, get off my property. Um, and then he puts two and two together and realizes mm -hmm. that that is it's not Kayla. Yeah. He's like, you must be the sister. Okay. So, um, I'm assuming that he followed her or had her followed, and then that's how he knew where she lived. I don't know, but you owe him some money. They gonna find where he <laughs> get that money back. He his money back. Like, <laughs> he okay. like he said, I don't care who you are. I want my money. <laughs> <laughs> that's all he was concerned about. He wasn't caring about nothing uh -huh. because this is what happened. Like her ex rolled up, and he's like, "What's going on?" Uh -huh. And um, he did get on that he, bike quick though when the husband oh, rolled up. I'm like, really? <laughs> Like, he was big and bad then uh -huh. with the other guy. Uh -huh. Okay. So then he told her before he left, he was like, I don't care who pays me. I'm I want my, my money. money. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's going to uh -huh. get his money, okay? One way or another. So, um, but of course, Jada, before he leaves, Jada takes the opportunity to ask him when was the last time he saw Kayla. Because that's her, he... He, he's on a one-track mi mission that's to get his money. She's on a one-track mission that's to find her sister. So he ha she has to make sure she questions him. Okay, so then he drives off. Okay, so Jada tells Tyrell her ex what's been going on. And he's like, why didn't you tell me all of this? And she's like, because I knew you'd stop me. And he's like, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. but um, he tells her that, um, you know, she can get herself or she can get their daughter killed. And I understand, definitely anybody can understand his concern. Um, 
And he basically tells her to stay out of it, reminds her that she's a mother and that she has responsibilities. Um, so he gives her the money to pay TK off, but he lets her know that she needs to stop. Once she pays him off, she needs to stop doing what she's doing or he's going, they're going to have to discuss custody yeah. of Megan, their daughter. Um, and I actually think he was the most sensible person in the mm -hmm. whole movie. Um, that's just me. What do you think? Yeah. Like, I mean, you should roll up and you got a drug dealer in your driveway and your daughter's there. He's threatening your ex. And you come I to find out what been going on and he already don't like Kayla to begin with and everything leading back to her so yeah I don't, I don't blame him yeah I'm surprised he didn't take her yeah right then and there why yeah. she did did he I think he, he had her he, he, might, he had the suit he had the luggage packed I don't yeah, know if it was I, that particular scene but I know later on he had the luggage packed and he was ready to go and I think he took both of them yeah he did I think he did take both the girls yeah um but of course, Jada did not listen to him, so she goes right back to the yeah, nightclub. Yeah, she, she doubled down. Yeah. <laughs> it went mm -hmm. in one ear and out the other, and she went back to hanging out with Jada's friends um, and try, still trying to get information out of them. They're not talking because they're just concerned about, you know, getting drunk or whatever, getting high. Um, so the guy who was suspicious of her tells her that the Call cops... Her. Yeah, the cops came by looking for you, and then he says, or I should say, they came by looking for Kayla, and that's when she knows that he's on to her. So, um, after that, none of them want to talk to her, and one of them even accuses her of being underco an undercover cop. Yeah. Um, so then she gets upset and she storms out and she tells them. After you know, she gives them a piece of her, she gives them a piece of her mind about you know y'all supposed to be her friends. You think you'd be more trying to help me out find her? So but right. So then she storms out. So she goes back to Kayla's apartment and she's in Kayla's apartment. Um, and then someone comes to the door and she gets a knife and she's um, about to open the door. Well, she opens the door and then the guy who was suspicious of her is standing there. And in my mind, I'm like, okay. It's about to go down. Yeah, I was scared <laughs> for her. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, he says, um, do you want to know what happened to your sister? So then he decides, I guess, decides to help her. Okay, so um, he, he takes her to a guy who saw her right before she disappeared. Um, and that guy gives her some very um, valuable information and that leads her to the person who is responsible or was responsible for Kayla's disappearance. Now, we could tell you what the guy said, but we don't want to ruin the entire movie for mm -hmm. you. So we're going to leave it there. We're going to stop here and, um, just know that there are plenty more twists and turns. Plenty more. Um, there were a couple of twists and turns in this movie, and I was I was a little surprised that um, you know it wasn't as predictable as yeah. the first two, in my opinion. Um, so, Corey, what mm -hmm. would you rate this movie? This movie was actually. I know you. Um, this movie is based off actual events, I believe. I think that was one of the things at the beginning of the show. It's based off actual events, and I think you had mentioned that maybe Lion Sister it was too. I'm not can't remember yeah, for sure. It was. But it seemed like in Lion Sisters they ad lived with a lot of the story more than what they may have done with this one, because this one was pretty straightforward. Because you know Lion Sisters, some stuff happened like you couldn't really see that happen if it was really. If it really took place that know. way, but I'm not <laughs> going to revisit, know. not going to revisit Lion Sister. But I can see this one playing out pretty much the way it played out. And it seemed like not knowing what actually happened in the case, I can see this one happening the way it said it happened. And and and, and really true stories like that, they're always they're always better because it it really happened. So I give this one a good eight because um. Like I said, once the, it threw me off the trail a little bit, 
until like till the meeting that she had the very last person who sort of um, gave the reveal of what may have happened to Kayla. So it was sort of so it sort of caught me by surprise when it when it all played out. But um, I got I, I gave it an A. I think the acting was good. I think it was better than the first two because I think they had to stick more to what the actual events may have happened, how, how the actual events may have actually happened. So, um, on that line, I think it was actually a, a really good movie. Um, the Detectives, that might be the thing. I, mean, I can see Detectives acting that way, but it seemed like this took a long time for them to come around. And then, especially when you hear about um, some of the stuff with um, Detective Hill Jasmine's character, some of the stuff she went through, it's like she would have been more... Um, sympathetic towards what um, Jada was going through, but all in all, it was a real good movie. Again, I think it's something that folks will enjoy, especially given that it was based off actual events. Um, not knowing how much they may have played around with the actual de particular details throughout the story, but I thought it was a good movie. Um, yeah, eight. So, so that was your favorite. Out of the three, I would say, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would rate this. Um, I think I'd rate it about a nine, like an eight and a half or a nine. Again, Tatiana Ali did an amazing job, and Justin uh, Bruining uh, did a great job. Um, the rest of the cast were good, also. This one to me wasn't as predictable as the yeah. other ones. Um, Usually, Corey can figure out the person in the first two seconds, but he wasn't able to this time. And I went back and forth. So, um, you know, that was good um, it, that it wasn't predictable. Yeah, so I, I would give it about an eight and a half or a nine, maybe closer to a nine. Um, yeah, I liked all of them though. Yeah, they were all good. They were yeah. all good. So um, that concludes our three movie um, lifetime series. And so in the next three videos, we are going to be watching movies that um, Corey picks. And do you want to tell them your theme yet or do you want to wait? I think I'll wait. You're not sure wait. what it's gonna be yet. So I'm waiting. I'm still debating. He I'm had he had a couple of ideas, but um, yeah. But we'll we'll let you know and stay tuned. Uh, yeah, stay tuned <laughs> for the next video, and um, you'll see what type of movies Corey likes. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. No, I play. Oh goodness, please! Not a lot of violence. Okay. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Unfortunately. Because he watched all of the ones I wanted to watch, I have to watch anything he wants me to watch. But I told him, um, <laughs> what's the one with the red light, green light? Oh, Squid Game. Yeah, yeah I can't do. I can't do that one. I already told him that. That's the one one that I can't do because it's just too many, uh, too much gore. Anyway, thank you so much for watching our video. Um, if you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you enjoy content like this, please consider subscribing. And um, if you've seen the movie, please comment down below. Let us know what you thought. Um, even if you haven't seen the movie, please let us know what you thought about our recap and review. Um, thank you so much for watching again, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.